Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. It's all about sharing all the information that we have based on science, based on tra tradition, based on observation of how we have survived for millions of years on food as our best medicine. We have to go back to the diet, our diet, not dieting, but diet. That's what food is. It's our diet. And the American diet is not a nutritious diet. It's a junk diet. It's overloaded with carbohydrates. There's very little protein in the American diet. Very poor quality of fats. And we should be having lots of healthy fats. High to moderate intakes of protein. And no sugar. No sugar. And less carbohydrates. That diet will change your life because we are a sick nation consuming, well, what I would like to say is tons of sugar. It's not quite tons, but boy, it's a high intake of sugar. We are consuming more sugar than ever before. You know, in the early 1900s, we consumed about five to six pounds of sugar per year for each individual on an average basis. Now, some reports I have seen bring that up to 250 pounds of sugar per year for each individual annually, every year. I don't need any sugar. Zip, zero, none. And the foods I eat do not have sugar in them. I eat a little bit of carbohydrates. I consume about 30, 40, maybe 50 grams of carbohydrates per day. That's 10 times less than the American diet. You'll feel so much better. All your aches and pains, all of your conditions and diseases will be improved dramatically. In three to six months, on a diet of that nature, will change your life. You may not believe it, but we need a good, healthy diet of good quality proteins. Beef, pork, fish, seafoods of all kinds, eggs, dairy, whatever you can eat that you don't have any allergy reactions to. Some people can't handle milk, so you don't use milk. But you can get good protein from beef. You know, I just did a report on Facebook. Meat. An eight-ounce ribeye contains 18 vitamins and minerals and 65 grams of protein and fats but the fats are good for us. They are not bad fats. And when we eat eggs, each egg has six grams of protein and 13 vitamins and minerals. Where can you find that full spectrum of vitamins and minerals, proteins, and fats in greens, roots, vegetables, legumes, beans. You can't. There is more nutrition and better for you in meat, eggs, dairy, seafoods than there are in vegetables. Now, we do need some vegetables. There are some compounds found in vegetables and fruits that are not found in meat and eggs. But so many people have been brainwashed that meat, 
and eggs are bad for us. They're the best proteins you can consume. Your diet is the foundation of your health. I think supplements are a big part of that because they fill in the gap of things that are missing in our food today. But basically, what we eat makes a difference. Our food contains nutrients, natural chemicals that talk to our cells, send messages to our cells, and good food sends good messages. Bad food sends bad messages to our cells, and we end up either with good health or bad health. It's that simple. How would man and woman, human, survive for millions of years on food? Because their food was healthy, natural, not lo- loaded with pesticides, chemicals, all the other junk that are now applied to our foods, genetically modified, all the things that are causing damage to our food, and then the ultra-processed foods and the packaged foods and prepared foods that have very little or no, no nutrition. How do you think you're going to be well on a diet of ultra-processed foods? You can't. It's been studied over and over and over again that ultra-processed foods are responsible for many of our diseases today. Go back to a healthy diet. I recommend the ketogenic diet. You can also use the paleo diet or the Mediterranean diet. But food is what makes the difference between health or illness. So as always, we are here every weekend, same time, same station, with similar messages of how to get well. And there are many messages we send out, and they're all scientifically proven. I share them with you, but I don't make them up. They're not my ideas. There is science behind everything we share with you. Everything can be reverenced. <laughs> reverenced. <laughs> uh, all the stuff can be proven. So today, we're going to talk about melatonin. There's so much that we don't know about melatonin. It's not just for sleep. Some people say, oh, I don't take melatonin. I don't have a problem sleeping. Your whole body, every cell, has a receptor site for melatonin. We'll talk about more coming up. And then what research shows about preventing eczema in kids? If you have a problem, is it your brain or your liver? And could you be too young to have a heart attack? Well, not today. And we'll talk about DIM, D-I-M. And Lordy, Lordy, if you smoke, please try and quit. There's nothing good about it. And then how can you have pain-free joints? And then one of my favorite herbs, Andrographis is for infection of all kinds. Upper respiratory tract infection, sinus infection, kidney infection, liver infection, all types of infections, and much, much more. It's one of the best overall herbal medicines for the health of your body. But we want you to have all that benefit. So we're going to go back to melatonin. What you probably know about melatonin, because you've heard it so many times and so often, and in so many different 
articles or books that it's for sleep. Yes, it does help you go to sleep. Because basically it's secreted from the pineal gland in the brain at nighttime. So most melatonin is excreted in the brain at nighttime. And it regulates the circadian rhythm, the sleep cycle, and keeps a regular sleep-wake cycle. And when people take melatonin at nighttime for sleep, and you can take melatonin during the day, and you will not go to sleep. And it has other benefits when you take it during the day. But people take it at night. And the best time to take it is as it gets dark. Not an hour before bedtime. That's usual the prescription. Take melatonin an hour before bedtime. Well, the pineal gland excretes melatonin in the presence of darkness. So when we have sunset, that's the onset of darkness. And that's when the pineal gland secretes melatonin. So if you go to bed at midnight and you take it at 11, you take your melatonin at 11 o'clock, an hour before bedtime, you have missed about four hours of melatonin therapy. And then maybe you take it an hour before you go to bed at 10 o'clock. So you take it at 9 o'clock and you go to bed and you get up because you have to go to the bathroom. Or maybe the child, your child was crying, so you're checking on your children. Even a small exposure to light can interrupt the production of melatonin, and you immediately stop the secretion of melatonin because now your brain thinks it's light. It's time to get up. So sitting in a brightly lit room or looking at a bright screen before bedtime can reduce the time period of melatonin secretion by at least well, up to 90, at least 90 minutes. And exposure to light during normal sleep time can reduce melatonin levels by 50%. Now, I've said so often, Melatonin is not just for sleep. In fact, I wrote a book on melatonin. If you want to know more, you can find my book on my website or in many health food stores or on Amazon. And my book is entitled, Wake Up. Melatonin is not just for sleep. Why? Because it's a very powerful anti-inflammatory. That means it's working on your joints that are inflamed, where you have arthritis, or maybe you have heart disease. Any inflammatory condition can be improved with melatonin. It's a very powerful antioxidant. And oxidative stress is the opposite of antioxidant. Oxidative stress damages our cells, destroys our cells. And oxidative stress is caused by radiation, by excessive sun exposure, by chemicals, by drugs, by smoking, obesity. So oxidative stress damages our cells. Inflammation then comes there to put out the damage, to stop the damage and repair the damage. Melatonin is a very powerful anti-cancer therapy. It regulates the metabolism of the body. It fixes sleep dysfunction. Regulates the circadian rhythm. It keeps the heart healthy and prevents cardiovascular disease. 
Now that's more than sleep, right? Melatonin is not a hormone. As much as you maybe have read or have been told, it's a hormone. It's not a hormone. A hormone comes from a very specific gland, like thyroxin is the hormone of the thyroid. DHEA, pregnenolone, are hormones from the adrenal glands. Melatonin is found in all kinds of different food, every living plant, every living species. It's everywhere. It's universal. That's not like the behavior of a hormone. A hormone is excreted from one gland. And you can't find it. You can't find thyroxin in food. You can't find DHEA or pregnenolone in food. Melatonin is everywhere. Walnuts, cherries, cherry juice. Animals, whether it be a reptile or a human, we all have a certain level of melatonin already being produced in the body. And it's in every cell in the body. And it's critical for the immune function. Doctors were chastised during the epidemic, pandemic rather, I should say, that they were recommending melatonin to maintain a healthy immune function. The Cleveland Clinic, one of the finest clinics in the country, reported that after screening nearly 27,000 patients, the use of melatonin was associated with a 28% reduction in the risk of contracting a virus, especially the COVID virus. And women with low melatonin levels were 15 times more likely to have breast cancer than women with high melatonin levels in a clinical trial. This was a trial of breast cancer in women. And women with very low levels of melatonin were 15 times more likely to contract breast cancer. And low melatonin levels Maybe why older adults, because as we get older, we produce less of these internal body functions. Older adults and night shift workers who more likely experience chronic health conditions than cancer because they do not produce enough melatonin. And that's not all. That's not even close to being, that's all. In type 2 diabetes, 18% reduction in A1C levels when using melatonin. Gingivitis, 64% improvement in gingivitis in people with periodontal disease used as a topical melatonin. ADHD, With melatonin, it improves sleep in those people suffering from ADHD by 88% of all patients. Improved behavior, 71% of all patients. A more positive mood, 61% of all patients. We reported in a children's trial treated with melatonin. Yes, children also should be treated with melatonin. Now, the only thing difference between a child and an adult is the dosage. I take 25, 35 milligrams of melatonin daily. It has a huge effect protecting our health, preventing diseases, reversing diseases, reducing oxidative stress, 
reducing inflammatory conditions. And fatty liver. Fatty liver affects about 30 to 40 million adults and 18% of our children. And we have found in some studies that children under five, 30% of children under five are overweight. All this obesity and overweight fatty conditions cause a condition called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Drug companies are trying to compete with one another to come up with a drug which has not been found yet or developed yet to treat fatty liver. Well, we know what makes the liver fat, sugar and carbohydrates, which has replaced alcohol. So in fatty liver, in a study of 40 patients, with fatty liver experienced a 36 production, excuse me, reduction in inflammatory C-reactive protein. Now that means they reduce the inflammation in their liver, which would cause additional con- uh, diseases. And 21 of the 40 patients saw liver fat levels return to normal range just after three months of treatment. There are natural compounds like andrographis, melatonin, as we speak of now, that can treat fatty liver disease and the diet. We have increased carbohydrates and sugar and calories of those carbohydrates and sugar. We're consuming 500 500 more calories today than we have 10 years ago. And we are more lazy in our lifestyle than we ever have been before. We're not burning up the calories. And the calories are not nutritious. They're not healthy. So we have this condition called non-alcoholic. And we say, and the reason we say non-alcoholic, because Alcoholics were the ones that were treated for fatty liver years ago because alcohol caused the fat in the liver and replacing liver cells, healthy liver cells, with fat. Our liver might weigh four to five pounds. In many individuals, it's up to 20 pounds. So that's about 15 pounds of fat in the liver. So, you can see why reducing carbohydrates and sugar and reducing your calories, you don't have to count calories by just changing your diet because carbohydrates and sugar are very rich in calories with very, no, I should say, no nutrition. So, the the cure for fatty liver is not a drug. It's a change of lifestyle a change of diet, and maybe some supplements like melatonin and agraphis. So how do you use melatonin? Well, since melatonin has a very short half-life, that means any substance you take has a half-life. That means half of it will be excreted or totally used up at a certain period of time. Like St. John's wort. As a 24 hour life halftime. So if you take it in the morning, on Monday morning, by Tuesday morning, you've only used half of that dosage. But in melatonin, it has only 35 to 45 minutes of half life or half lifetime. It's sustained release is the answer. Find a melatonin that has sustained release. And it releases over three to seven, eight hours. It'll take you through the night. And take it about 
sunset, or at least a couple hours before you go to bed. Not an hour. And it's not a sedative. Melatonin tells your body that it's time to get ready for rest, for sleep, and help start the winding down process. Kids six and up, they can take anywhere from one to two and a half milligrams of melatonin. It's absolutely safe. There's no side effects. Adults, five to 10 milligrams. I have a friend that just went through chemo and radiation for colon cancer. She was diagnosed at stage four. And at that stage, most doctors don't want to treat a patient because that is the end of their life, stage four. She was at stage four when she was diagnosed. But she did all of her homework and research on natural supplements and also did some chemo and some radiation. And her research shows that when she went through radiation and chemo, she took 300 milligrams of melatonin because it protects the body to that degree. So if you want more information, melatonin is a marble molecule. It's a miracle molecule. So look for my book. Wake up. Melatonin is for more than just sleep. You can get it as a paperback on Amazon. And I explain in the book that it's the answer to areas of good health and goes far beyond supporting sleep. So look for my book, Wake Up, Melatonin is More Than Just Sleep. And my other books as well to help you live a thriving, healthy life. Simply research my name, Terry Lemerand, L-E-M-E-R-O-N-D, in the book section on Amazon. So we've got a pause here. I'll be right back right after these messages. Stay right where you are. I'll be right back. This is Terry Naturally with Terry Talks Nutrition. And welcome back, my friends. This is Terry Naturally. And this is my opportunity to talk to you on Terry Talks Nutrition. We're going to bring you a lot more information yet in the last, in the last half hour of our program today. And you can always find us right here. We're not going to go anywhere. I hope you don't either. We're right here every weekend. Same time, same station. You can't miss us. And I would ever hate to miss you. So join me every weekend. Stay with us and we'll bring you a lot more information. It's real information. We don't give this information to you that, oh, I made this up. It's not me. All this is scientifically driven. All the information I gave you prior to the pause in the show on melatonin, there are several top medical scientists around the world. And one of the top researchers is in San Antonio, Texas, at the University of Texas. And he has spent 40 years of his career studying melatonin. It is totally non-toxic. It is, it'll, it's, it is safe as anything you eat on the ta- at the table. It will not cause any side effects. You can give it to children. We all secrete melatonin. But now we have a lot more on the docket to share with you. We're going to talk about, hmm, what about eczema or eczema in children and kids? Can we help them as well? Can we improve what's going on in their life? So let's talk about how we can help children preventing eczema or eczema. It is, as you might suspect, an inflammatory skin condition. Inflammation. Causing dry, itchy skin and can be small to large patches of itchy skin. And it's usually treated with a topical steroid cream. But also adults can have eczema as well. 
but it is far more common in children. And research has found that health during pregnancy, ladies, this is your obligation to your children, your responsibility to your children, that what you eat during your pregnancy or even before is going to ultimately decide the illnesses and diseases of your child. So research has found during pregnancy, the health of that individual, the mother, can drastically reduce the risk of children developing all diseases and eczema. So, mom, how do you take care of your body during pregnancy? Well, there's a couple of things that mom can do. First of all, take a probiotic. The beneficial probiotic, Lactobacillus rhamnosus, given during pregnancy and even while breastfeeding, can significantly reduce the risk of eczema in babies. But we have so many that do not use breast milk or do not breastfeed. It is so critical. And mom just to save time, convenience, whatever. Now we've had a lot of moms in our research team that would breastfeed in the office. We made them a special, convenient room that they could breastfeed whenever it was time for them. So this bacteria, it's a probiotic bacteria called lactobacillus rhamnosus. You can find it in many probiotic products. And vitamin D. Both low levels of vitamin D in pregnancy and low vitamin D levels in kids are associated with a significantly higher risk of eczema. And omega-3. Omega-3 from various seafood sources, like salmon. Prenatal omega-3. Supplementation was shown to reduce a specific type of eczema called the IgE-associated eczema in children less than three years of of age. So work on your diet, Mom. It's your child that is is being developed from day one. Prepare your body so that your child has the environment to grow positively. Now is the problem, your brain or your liver? What about dementia? Alzheimer's disease? Well, we're learning new studies all the time. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of studies done every year on a variety of health concerns. And a new study on brain function finds that up to 10% of dementia are actually caused by liver disease. When a diseased liver stops removing toxins from the bloodstream because it's overwhelmed with fat, toxins, and poisons, so it cannot stop removing toxins from the bloodstream, this trash can accumulate in the brain and damage brain cells 
causing symptoms similar to dementia. So the liver is kind of a gatekeeper, preventing damage going into the brain because the liver can no longer handle the amount of toxins in our bloodstream. So obviously, dementia has to be treated through the liver. Treating the liver reverses the brain problem. And actually, in a study, researchers collected data from over 177,000 veterans with dementia who had never, ever been treated for liver disease. And after analyzing their health records, the researchers found that 10% of the subjects or participants had underlying symptoms suggesting they had a liver dysfunction. The researchers urged anyone experiencing dementia symptoms to talk to their doctor about liver function tests. Reversible dementia is a real thing. You do not have to just bear with it. Or if you're taking care of a loved one who you fear may have dementia, don't wait for, you think, a drug being developed that will treat it. 98% of all of our diseases are caused by our diet and lifestyle choices. Not getting the right nutrition, eating too much of the junk food that we don't, don't need and does not provide any nutrition. Sometimes I think it's not what we eat that makes us healthy. It's what we don't eat that destroys our health. And when we avoid them, our health returns back to a more normal state. Now, there are three nutrients that I have found in the research that protect the liver. My, one of my favorite herbs, andrographis. I'll spell that for you. A, like apple. N, like Nancy. D, like David. R, like Robert. O like Olive, G like George, R Robert, A Apple, P Peter, H Harry, I S, Andographis I S. Why is it so important for the liver? Well, it reduces fat deposits in the liver by 33%. It increases protective antioxidant levels in the liver. Oxidative stress of the liver causes tremendous damage. Andrographis is a very powerful protective antioxidant that protects the liver. And it also reduces insulin levels by 42%. Now, another herb that I like a lot, and I've talked about this in the past, is French grapeseed, the OPCs. In patients with fatty liver, grapeseed extract reduced liver enzyme levels by 46% and liver enlargement by about 10%. The other one I like is milk thistle, one of the best known botanicals for the liver because it's been associated with liver health for about 40 or 50 years. Antigraphis is new. Grapeseed extract research is new, but milk thistle has been used for about 40 or 50 years, particularly in Europe. And in human trials of patients with liver disease, treatment with milk thistle reduced elevated liver enzymes by up to 30%, and in some cases returning liver enzymes to normal levels. Now, what I would do, 
because I would take all these three together. Andographus, OPC from French grapeseed, and milk thistle. And what I would do is I would look for a formula for a healthy liver intake, take 200 milligrams of andographus, 100 milligrams of OPCs from French grapeseed extract, and 100 milligrams of milk thistle, at least twice a day. That would be about a serving, but I would take that twice a day. That would have a huge effect on returning your liver to a healthy state. Now, do you think it's too young? Should, shouldn't heart attacks be associated with older people? Can young people have heart attacks too? You bet. And more young people are having heart attacks every year. All of our diseases at one time were thought to be associated with aging of adults. As we got into our 70s and 80s and 90s, our body was pretty much wore out. And that's why we had more diseases. But now new studies report that a 30% increase in death from heart attacks in people ages 25 to 44. Can you get that? 30% increase in death from heart attacks in people ages 25 to 44. So where, why do we have this increase of young people dying from heart attacks? Well, we don't have all the answers. But there are some theories. The COVID vaccine, or excuse me, the COVID infection has been linked to heart damage. A 20 22 study found that the risk of heart attacks doubled in the year after COVID infection. Young people are more likely to ignore the symptoms of a heart attack or mistake their symptoms for something else until it's too late. While the classic sign of a heart attack is chest pain, other signs that something might be wrong with your heart can include light headedness, heart palpitations, shortness of breath, and if these symptoms, if these signs and symptoms are associated with your lifestyle, see a doctor. Get checked out. If you have concerns, hopefully nothing, but you don't know. It's better to be cautious because heart attacks are silent. 50% of the people that die from a heart attack, the first symptom is death. You don't know you've had a heart attack. And especially check with your doctor if you recently had a COVID infection, it damages the heart. Now, there are some suggestions to maintain a heart-healthy body with healthy nutrition, healthy nutrients. If you've had COVID within the last year, or even if you didn't, Heart disease is the leading cause of death for Americans. Consider adding the following supplements to your regimen. A combination of red sage and red ginseng. Take about 200 milligrams of this combination daily. Red sage increases nitric oxide production. 
That means it's opening up the arteries, reducing the plaque in the arteries, which helps open up those blood vessels to increase circulation to the heart and prevents clots. And red ginseng also helps with cellular energy and reduces the stress on the heart. And stress is also a killer. Red sage, red ginseng. CoQ10. I take a CoQ10, 100 milligrams, with gamma cyclodextrin daily. It's critical for cellular energy, for your heart and brain, which uses more energy than any other organs in the body. They need energy. They need nutrition. You can't drive your car without gas. And your body needs nutrition to be able to do what it was meant to do. And then a combination of aronia berry, that might be new to you. Aronia is spelled A like apple, R like Robert, O like olive, N like Nancy. I-A, aronia, berry, sometimes known as choke berries. Very, very healthy berry. It's the healthiest berry of all berries. And I use about a cup a day of aronia berries in my protein drink. They're not a good eating berry. They're not like blueberries or strawberries or raspberries. It's a very dry berry. It's a tart berry. It's like drinking dry wine. So you get that puckering feeling in your mouth. That's what aronia berries do. But in my drink, I get all the health benefits because it is the healthiest berry of all berries. It's just, unfortunately, not a good eating berry because it has such a high concentration of OPCs the anthocyanins, like dry wine. There's a lot of tannins. But it's a healthy, healthy, healthy berry. And also, additional OPCs from French grape seed extract. Take 200 milligrams of this combination daily. Both contain very powerful antioxidant compounds which can help increase blood flow and circulation to protect heart cells from damage. We can work on prevention. And number one, stop sugar. Reduce drastically your carbohydrates. If you want to be healthy, there's a plan for that. And within three to six months, with the right plan, you'll be a new person. If you smoke, please quit. Do whatever you have to do. Stop smoking. It has no value. If you put out the cigarettes, stop smoking, it can significantly reduce the risk of cancer. Smoking causes about 20% of all cancer deaths. 80% of all lung cancer are associated with smoking. A new study looks at the risk of cancer in former smokers. Researchers collected data from over 3 million adults and followed them for 17 years, tracking the incidence of lung, liver, colon, and stomach cancer. The results versus continuous smokers. Smokers who quit before the age of 50 had a 57% reduction in the risk of lung cancer. 
and subjects who quit smoking at 50 or older still had a 40% reduction in lung cancer risk. It really makes a difference. Stop smoking. There's no value to smoking. The earlier you stop smoking, the better. But it is never too late to experience additional health benefits of quitting smoking. It has no value, absolutely no value, but so much harm. Now, would you like to have a freedom of pain in your joints? You can. Do your joints ache? Do you have pain? Then there's a lot of inflammation there. In a recent survey, 30% of adults reported they had experienced joint pain in the last month. Most common was knee pain, followed by hip and joint pain, as well as shoulder pain. The most commonly used medication for joint pain, acetaminophen. One brand is called Tylenol. And it's an over-the-counter NSAID like ibuprofen. They both have toxic side effects. And yet they're still sold over-the-counter. You can buy any quantity you want and use any quantity that you want because nobody's going to monitor you. So the problem with these drugs, acetaminophen has been shown in clinical studies to be no better, no better than a placebo, a fake, fake pill, at relieving joint pain. It doesn't do anything to improve joint function. Also can wreck your liver. The number one cause of liver failure and liver damage is acetaminophen. In all NSAID drugs, which stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, can cause bleeding of the stomach, ulcers, and increased risk of, your heart, of a heart attack or stroke. There are many effective natural options to relieve pain and improve joint function. I'm just going to throw out a few for you to try. A combination of curcumin and boswellia is as effective as any NSAID for relieving pain, but without adverse effects. I gave a, I, I talked about an article several weeks ago on rose hip extract, which can reduce inflammation and stimulate the collagen production in the joints to increase mobility and flexibility. Glucosamine and chondroitin, the building blocks of cartilage, the connective tissue and joints, and also topically, don't forget to maybe include comfrey cream. Comfrey is a very healing plant and made into a cream that can be applied topically to joints and other areas of the body that have inflammation or pain. And has been shown in clinical studies to significantly reduce pain. Every person is unique. So some experimentation may be needed to determine the right formula and the right dosage for your specific needs. But all of these that I have mentioned are very, very safe. No side effects or no adverse events. Extremely safe. Does not cause any type of stomach or liver or kidney damage. And with that, my friends, I've got to get out of here today. My time is already up. I hate that. hate to leave you, but it always comes to an end. But I'll be back, same time, same session, next week. So say a prayer for this crazy world. God bless you, my friends, and God bless this great country. 
Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.